Last night, almost three million people watched this broadcast to find out about George Soros. Last night, we introduced you to the puppet master, billionaire financier George Soros, notorious for collapsing economies and regimes all around the world. He's known uh, as the man who broke the Bank of England. The Prime Minister of Malaysia called Soros an unscrupulous profiteer. In Thailand, he was branded the economic war criminal. They also said that he sucks the blood from people. In 1994, George Soros stated, quote, just right that the former Soviet empire is now called the Soros empire. Combine these credits with his power, along with his financial fortune, it is no wonder that he fancies himself some sort of god. That's not something that we have said. That is something that he claims. He has described himself over and over again as some sort of god, even as the conscience of the world. Yes, I did say that, and actually I stand by it. I think the world very much needs a conscience. I want my foundation network to be the conscience of the world. Okay, he wants it to be the conscience of the world. Well, he's a very, very generous man. Most people in the world know him as a philanthropist. Huge charity guy. Well, we'll look into that charity tonight. He gets a kick out of playing God. It's actually amusing to him. He, he says, in his own words, it's a game. Unfortunately, what Mr. Soros forgets is these are real people. This is not some game. Real lives are being destroyed for his financial gain and for his power. I'm called a hate monger because I have conservative views and positions like, I don't know, let people keep their money. But let me tell you this, it takes a cold, cold heart to have full knowledge that what you are doing to make a buck is literally destroying the lives of people. And now he's messing with your life. He says, in his own words, America is his next target. I became concerned with the problems of globalization, where you have global markets, but you have politics based on the sovereignty of states. So how do you deal with that, that issue? And, uh, and then I came to the realization that open society is endangered by, by our current leadership in, in this country, and that is when I refocus my attention on the United States. He has focused his attention. This isn't um, a hypothesis. This has been proven. This is what this man does. He has done it before, and now he wants an orderly decline of the dollar. His words, not mine. If you thought five or four dollar a gallon gas is painful, wait until Soros devalues your dollar even more. Forget about driving. How about eating? We've told you um, just recently, I've told you this for, what, two years now, that they would devalue the dollar and that inflation would come. Financial Times reported it today. It's about to be added to your grocery bill. And if you're the one in the household doing the grocery shopping, you've already seen it. But, oh, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. As they devalue our dollar, an orderly decline. You'll start to see prices like one group, uh, inflation group, predicted that it will soon cost $11. $11.43 for an ear of corn. One ear. How about going to the grocery store and seeing a price tag on a loaf of wheat bread of $23.05. This sugar, this size, 32 ounces of sugar, $62.21. For the milk... Good old soy milk. I mean, who doesn't? Smooth and delicious. $24.31 for this size. For a container of this coffee, Folgers, 11 and a half ounces, $77.71. For a uh, container of orange juice, not this size, but for 64 fluid ounces, f fluid ounces Minute Maid orange juice, they are now saying it will be $45.71. And one thing that I couldn't believe, and we called the experts and asked them, okay, the, the, please tell me that this, uh, this institute on inflation is nuts. No, no, they're not, unfortunately. I couldn't believe that one candy bar, one Hershey's milk chocolate candy bar, one, uh, one and a half ounces Hershey's milk chocolate, 
$15.50. This, Mr. Soros, is not a game. At least not for the schlubs outside of your world. I don't know anybody inside the world of George Soros. Well, you've got Timothy Geithner, you have Ben Bernanke, you have most of the politicians in Washington. We're the ones who are going to risk in this game. When he manages the decline of our dollar, him and his minions in Washington, who do you think pays the price? Will it be him or will it be you? You see, he knows what's coming. And because of that, he can hedge. He knows exactly where to go. He knows where the exits are. And he's done it over and over again. He will gain profit and power. And you will lose both. He's playing God, which is fine by him. Because he's an atheist. So there has to be a God who's going to fill that void. Well, he's smart enough to do it. In one transcript, he said that he was benevolent just like God. He sees the future just like God. So what does... God's Bible preach globalization. Open society is a desirable form of social organization, both as a means to an end and as an end in itself. Okay. That's, by the way, the replacement of the republic in open society. This is not a leap of faith. I'm stating this as fact. And as I told you last night at glenbeck.com and on theblaze.com, you will find all of these facts, all of the research. Do not take my word for it. Not one bit on this show. Do not take my word for it. Read about it yourself. Most of it comes in the form of his own words. Come on over here for a second. These are, uh, many of these are the books that we use to uh, prepare this show. And um, many of these books are written by him. This one, this one, this one. You can read about it. He's not shy about telling you. I mean, God wrote a book too. He wrote three. Because of his own words, we know what to look for. We know the signs. We know what he's done in the past to bring down regimes. He's left a, a blueprint, a pattern to look for. And now that Soros is saying that he has turned his focus and set his sights on America... Don't you think we should look at his past and see how he's done it before? What are the footprints? <laughs> Where is he leaving fingerprints? How did he do it? Four or five times before. Well, we also should look at what has he accomplished so far? How far down that line is he? Tonight, we look at the Puppet Master's latest work of art, America Under Siege. All right, George Soros has his sights on America. So how does he view us? Well, it's easy. He views us like this. America is the main obstacle to a stable and just world order. The United States. His words, not mine. So not only does he want to bring America to her knees financially, he wants to reap obscene profits off us as well. Like when he made $1 billion off the collapse of the British sterling. His claim not mine. The money that I made on this particular transaction, the estimate is about a billion dollars. You were the guy, they said, who broke the Bank of England. Right, and... And, uh, well, and did. Uh, well, that's true. Uh, <laughs> He's just a lovable, old, spooky dude. By the way, um, his people, when they met with uh, my number two in a story that I told you last night, and... Uh, Remember, left us this threat, I, I mean this gift. Um, he says they, they didn't really make that much off it. So is he lying then or is he lying now? Which is it? This man causes misery in his wake. People's lives were ruined. Retirement accounts, savings, jobs, all gone. Grandma and grandpa saved their whole life. Gone. And he just walks away. You've saved your whole life if you've put all your money away for retirement. It's now worth 30% less in the last 10 years. And it's about to be worth a lot less. What are you going to do? Are you going to go back and get another job? See, he doesn't think about that stuff. Because your life is a game to this man. And again, listen to George Soros in his own words. When you uh, try to, let's see, improve society, 
you affect different people and uh, different interests differently and they, they are not actually commensurate so you, you very often have all kinds of unintended uh, adverse consequences so i had to experiment and it was it was a learning process the first part was this uh, subversive activity disrupting a rep repressive regimes uh, that was a lot of fun and that, that's actually mm. what got me hooked on this whole uh, enterprise mm. that was a lot of fun experimenting with people's lives this is what happens when people put themselves in an elite category or appoint themselves rulers or in his case see themselves as some sort of a god you become a plaything and he is the all-knowing all-seeing creator he has been playing this game for a very long time but before i show you how he's playing it now and what is coming i want to start in czechoslovakia half a century ago in czechoslovakia it was a scary scary time to live in this part of the world the world was changing europe was on fire joblessness joblessness hunger uh, hunger was on the rise people didn't know what to do protesters started rioting in the streets the average person was frightened out of their mind and so what did they do they begged the government please bring order stop the people rioting in the streets well they did and the next thing the average person knew they were a communist country it is important to remember this story because that's what history books would tell you but there's now new documents out that were never supposed to be released and it plays directly into today and what's happening in America and we'll get to that by the bottom of the hour but right now I want to show you the signs what is George Soros trying to do what is it how does he do it after country after country after country we found that there are five steps to him gaining control he does it over and over and over again so let's see what the steps are and let's see if he's done any of them here the first one is form a shadow government using a humanitarian aid as cover this is what he just said it's kind of funny it's kind of fun the first step he said is subversive activities okay step two control the airwaves fund existing radio and TV outlets and take control over them or start your own outlets remember take control of existing or start your own step three destabilize the state weaken the government and build an anti-government kind of uh, feeling in the country you exploit an economic crisis or take an advantage of an existing crisis pressure from the top and the bottom this will allow you to weaken the government and build anti-government public sentiment step four you provoke an election crisis you wait for an election and during the election you cry voter fraud step five take power you stage massive demonstrations civil disobedience sit-ins general strikes you encourage activism you promote voter fraud tell followers what to do through your radio and television stations well let's start at the beginning shall we do any of those sound familiar this is the way George Soros takes country down every time every time again he's done it how many times Joe four or five four times four times before we'll be number five so let's go back here the five steps to control the first one is form a shadow government using humanitarian aid as a cover hmm. now is he doing this well let me start with the central George Soros operation which is OSI this is his his main group OSI it is the uh, Open Society Institute it sounds warm and fuzzy and to hear the way they tell it it is warm and fuzzy oddly enough yesterday in a sign of I think total panic and collapse OSI released a video talking all about all the wonderful things that George Soros does it's fantastic must have cost them a fortune to put this up coincidentally it, it's released the day that we do our special to show you that he's just a lovable old philanthropist that's all he does he cares about people well I'm sure he does I'm sure he does because he's a humanitarian he's a philanthropist you know he gives tons of money I'll show you that whole thing at the end of the show through the Open Society Foundation he donates almost half a billion dollars annually to charity causes all around the globe well that's fantastic that's fantastic I love people who give a lot of money to charity I think that's fantastic I do now 
When you look at a charity, this is what I learned when I started to try to be responsible with my money. You look at people as an investment. Who's the, what's the best way to invest in people? But you need, if you're going to give away half a billion dollars every single year, you better have somebody who really knows how to manage it. And you better have somebody who has a big, big heart. Who is the person to head up your charitable arm, Mr. Soros? Well, he found, um, he just found the, the, I mean, he's just, just the founder of SDS, the radical student group from the 1960s. You remember. You remember the, the days of rage, riots? Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, and... And the, um, and the spin-off group, the Weather Underground. Yeah, just the guy who started this stuff, that's who heads the charitable arm. It's almost like subversive activities are kind of fun to Mr. Soros in the, under the cover of humanitarian aid. So OSI spreads the money all over the country. But I'm sure, I'm sure the head of OSI, he's probably changed. One of the things that OSI funded was the shadow conventions uh, in 2000, it funneled, funneled uh, one third of the shadow convention. Who was hosted here? I mean, unless you are an avid, you know, C-SPAN watcher, you probably don't remember them. But it was an attempt to, as they put it, focus on the issues that the parties just won't touch. Issues like campaign finance reform. Wait a minute. Last night, campaign finance reform. Now that's a good humanitarian thing, isn't it? Seriously, that's going to feed a lot of children. Campaign finance reform. Remember, we said that he spent over a million, over a hundred million dollars to get campaign finance reform. And uh, what happened? Oh yeah, I remember. It led to the boom in 501c3s, like MoveOn.org, or Media Matters, or any of the other things that he seems to fund. They can take in as much money as they want. And now all of those, all of those political organizations are controlled by George Soros. But remember. It's humanitarian. One of the organizers of the Shadow Convention was Ariana Huffington, which is now getting the Huffington Post money from George Soros to be able to hire reporters. Isn't that great? She was uh, introducing here uh, in 2000 at the Shadow Convention. She was introducing somebody else, uh, another guest speaker, another co-organizer of the event. Watch. We are now moving to the second issue of the, of the Shadow Convention, the persistence of poverty in the middle of our prosperity. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome one of our conveners, the Reverend Jim Wallace, the head of the Court of Renewal, a new coalition of churches to fight poverty, and the editor of Sojourners magazine. Oh. He's also been a mentor and an inspiration to me. So get ready to be inspired, Jim Wallace. Praise Jesus, Jim Wallace, Sojourners, faith, politics, culture. That's right, Sojourners, didn't he get a bunch of money recently to help boycott me? That's right, I remember him now. And Sojourners, another group funded by OSI. George Soros, an atheist, dumping a whole bunch of money into a Christian organization. Well, that almost doesn't make sense. Oh, but it's humanitarian. <laughs> kind of makes you question the motives, though, doesn't it? Of course, it doesn't take long to see that his attraction to Jim Wallace is because he's a big government progressive. The solution is not with the people and the churches. It is get everybody into the government. He's infiltrating the churches. You see how this works? I know, I know. I'm sorry, Mr. Soros. It's just humanitarian aid. Step number two is to control the airwaves. Has George Soros done this at all? Well, open society, I mean, it's, I mean, it's very innocent here. Um, and, and as pure as the driven snow, recently donated um, $1.8 million so that NPR could uh, hire new journalists. Do we have the NPR thing? Um, yeah, they just, $1.8 million so they could hire 100 journalists. And then Soros wrote a $100 million check to Media Matters to go along with, and I'm sorry, $1 million to go along with uh, NPR, which was great. Their stated goal, by the way, what got him to write that was uh, they were going to get me off the air and then destroy Fox. Isn't that great? By the way, um, he gave that million dollars and all that money after we, uh, we were threatened, I mean, we were given a gift by Mr. Soros, and uh, they realized that I wouldn't shut up. I wouldn't stop. 
And so then he decided, well, I guess I'm going to have to destroy him another way. Million dollars also to the Tea Party Tracker.org. Tea Party Tracker.org. This is a website that they developed with the NAACP's media staff. It's supposed to expose the intolerant element of the Tea Party. Then the NAACP takes its content and collaborates with Think Progress, a- another Soros funded group, along with Media Matters. And there you go. The next three steps? Next. We're talking about the plan for control that George Soros uses to take control of governments. The first one was form a shadow government, uh, government using humanitarian aid as a cover. In George Soros' words, subversive activities. By the way, here's Sojourners. Here's a, here's a letter a friend of mine gave me today. This is me on the cover. Glenn Beck doesn't like us. We must be doing something right. It's a fundraising letter for this guy. Number two, control the airwaves. Is he doing that? Uh, yes. Number three, destabilize the state and weaken the government and build an anti-government sentiment. Okay, so is he doing this? Well, again, we go back to his organization, his humanitarian organization, heavily funds the Tides Foundation. The Tides Foundation, $4.2 million. They're the ones that funded the anti-capitalist story of stuff indoctrination videos that we have told you that helps kids resent the government that supports a free market system. Tides itself takes some of its money and then sends it on to places like the Apollo Alliance, the home of Van Jones. They're the ones that also crafted the stimulus bill, you know, for the little guy, like Andy Stern. I think we all know how everyone feels about the stimulus bill. Also, OSI decides that uh, they're going to fund a place called the Center for American Progress. You know that one. That's a a progressive think tank that churn out big government ideas and who get many of their ideas from another group, OSI Funds, the IPS. This is the Institute for Policy Studies. You know what they've just come out with? This is great. They've just come out with uh, a couple of things. First, President Obama needs to bypass Congress and issue more executive orders now that the election is over. And they've come out with this exciting new report that says, quote, outside pressure, inside strategy. Wow. That sounds familiar. Inside strategy, outside pressure. It's almost like bottom-up, top-down. Why am I, what am I remembering here? Oh, yeah, I remember Czechoslovakia. Top to bottom, bottom to top, inside out. Remind me of that, along with George Soros and Van Jones in just a few minutes. I'll show you something that will blow your mind. Step four. Step four is provoke an election crisis. Well, <laughs> that, of course, hasn't, they haven't done anything like that. You know, where you lose confidence in the vote? No, 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 of course not. Of course, you have OSI funding ACORN. Uh, this is a group that's willing to uh, sell, um, you know, human sex slave traffickers and give them a tax break. Soros also created this, SOS, the Secretary of State Project. This is a group that is specifically designed to groom and elect Secretary of States around the nation because they're the ones who have to certify election results. How do you think, uh, what's his name, uh, from Minnesota got in last time? Remember all that? Remember Al Franken is, yeah, who's this project? Isn't that weird? They're the ones that call the shots. And Soros has pumped millions of dollars into voting-related groups, some of them legitimate, some get caught doing illegal things, some are kind of a little shady. I like this one myself, One America Votes. They get money from the tides. Remember, Soros funds that group. They sent illegal immigrants door-to-door in Washington State just before this last, last election to tell people that they were illegal, but you should get out and vote. There's George Soros for you. And then step number five, take power. Take power. This one is kind of hand in hand with stage demonstrations. This one's about to come. We've already seen the beginnings of it. The One Nation rally. We saw this. This is the labor union rally in D.C. as a response to 828, a project of the Tides Center, a.k.a. George Soros Group. OSI also donated to the Ruckus Society. They're an environmental, a radical environmental justice group known for their aggressive tactics. Remember, that was the guy I told you about last night. It was causing all the riots in Seattle. Uh, Then uh, OSI has donated to several groups who are trying to get me off the air. You have Faith in Public Life. That's funded by 
OSI, they're calling for my head. You have Sojourners, of course, they're calling for my head. You have Media Matters, all of them out of the pocket of George Soros. Mark my words, and I believe I said that for the last two years on inflation. As I told you, massive inflation will come, and you're beginning to see it now. Staged demonstrations and riots in the streets, you will see them here. What you're seeing today in the UK, this is students demonstrating in the streets. That's a demonstration, by the way. They will come here too, because what are they rioting about? That they are cutting services at schools and raising tuitions. Really? Well, they will come, and they will be orchestrated, funded, or they will be exploited by Soros-like groups. If you're watching this show, and George Soros is the puppet master, so I'm sure he's having somebody else watch it, what happens? What happens to all of these groups? What happens to all of these groups? This man is playing God. He thinks he's God. God created the earth in six days and then rested on the seventh. Well, George Soros has created all of these things. And believe me, it's not just in fact here. Do you have this? Yeah, come here, Aaron. Come here. You stand over here. Stand. Lovely and talented, Aaron. These are the open society. These are, uh, these are just the things that he has uh, donated to. I just want to show you because we don't have a lot of time. Um, so I just wanted to show you the list. These are the list of the organizations that are involved, you know, in these, in these five steps. And we wrote it out for you. But I just wanted to show you that, it, you know, it's no big deal. It's not like you're overpowered or anything like this. Um, there's more. There's, this is less than half of them. But, uh, but other than that, there's, there's nothing to see here. Just move on with your lives. Nothing to see here, folks. All right, I want to uh, show you some video that um, has been bothering me for a while, and I, I mentioned it at the top of the hour and, um, and also yesterday. I think this will tie things together. I hope it does if you watch both episodes. First one is from Bertha Lewis. Um, she's in front of a bunch of young socialists of America, and here's what she says. Logan and I get out into the street. You really have got to circle the wagons. This is not rhetoric or hyperbole. She talks this is real. She talks in here about um, how um, these Tea Partiers are going to come and get you. This is just like when they rounded up the Japanese. I mean, it's quite a stirring speech. That bothered me. That really bothered me. Because I do believe take power is the next st- step here. Stage demonstrations. Riots, they need trouble. But something bothered me even more. In the summer, Van Jones cloaked a message here in peace and love, and it stuck out to me. I want you to listen to what he says. You handle the top down, but it's also bottom up and inside out. Top down, bottom up, and inside out. So now your challenge as you leave here, our challenge, is to take care of that bottom up part and that inside out part, the heart part. That's what did it for me. He said the hard part. I'm like, that's not, there's something wrong here. But I didn't know what this meant. This is a tried and true technique that communists use to crush people of a nation between the members of a government at the top. Remember, he said, you've taken care of the top part. What does that mean? You put the right radicals in power. You've taken care of the top part. Then they get the radicals at the bottom to cause chaos. If you don't believe me, that's fine. I tell you, don't take my word for anything. You go ahead and look it up yourself. Let me take you back to where I took you at the beginning of this program, Czechoslovakia. I only told you half the story of what the Czechoslovakians thought was happening to their country in the late 1940s. After World War II, Czechoslovakia was in real trouble and people were hungry and there was strife. And a small group of communists managed to gain power in the Czech government through parliamentary maneuvers. That was taking care of the top-down pressure. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to all the people in Czechoslovakia, they were agitating people. 
getting them out into the streets, riot, strike, protest, create the illusion of a widespread clamor for change. That was the bottom-up pressure on the system. Well, the people were left in between, and they didn't know the truth. They didn't know what was going on. They were hungry, they were scared, they were confused, and they were looking from help for help. When they cried out for help from the government, which they thought was not with the rioters, oh, they got help. They had no idea that some of the top were in league with those creating the chaos at the bottom. The people at the top had formed a shadow government, and they were only too happy to help, and they helped by clamping down on the Czech people. So the Czech people were hit from both directions, top down, bottom up, and inside out. Their country was turned inside out. They didn't know what to believe. The same is now being called for. The organizations that are calling now for Obama to bypass Congress and issue just executive orders. The Institute for Policy Studies. Soros funding. They came out with their annual report that literally says outside, inside. Outside pressure and inside strategy. What does that mean? It's just a different way of saying up and down pressure. Same thing, outside, inside. Now, how do I know about this strategy in Czechoslovakia? Well, it came from uh, uh, Jan uh, Kozak's communist strategy paper. He was a writer and a member of the Communist Party at the time. He wrote this essay, and it was never intended to go public, but it accidentally did. We found it in a very old copy of the Congressional Records. Everything I am telling you for the last two nights, all of this, this strategy, all of this, The exposure. Why do you think George Soros sent his number two guy to my number two guy to ask us to consider him a kindly old gentleman? Because what he's doing was never meant to be published. But after being bullied, we stood up. We're not playing your game. It's no accident. This is what Van Jones meant. Top down, inside out, after the bottom up. What the Czech people didn't know is what you know now. That there is an orchestration of the ground. It's all being orchestrated. You know the groups involved now, and you know who's at the top. The Czechoslovakian people didn't know that, so they ran to the people they usually trusted. But they called for the wrong people. The other thing that the Czechoslovakian people didn't know is the first lesson of the 912 project. What was my goal when I introduced the 912 project? To tell you you are not alone. But here is here was one of the most important lines out of that, especially in retrospect. Listen to this. The truth is they don't surround us. We surround them. This is our country. Why is that important? Because when you study what happened in Czechoslovakia, the people felt alone. And they felt surrounded. You're not alone. And they do not surround you. It's an illusion. It's a puppet show. It's a stage. The radicals need you to feel that way. They need you to riot. They need you to create chaos. They'll do it if you won't, but they'd prefer that you did it. So when Van Jones says, bottom up, he means get out into the streets. Why do you think she's telling the young communists they're coming for you? Get out into the streets. It's a game. And George Soros enjoys the game. He finds it kind of fun, those subversive activities, not my words, his words. He means the government forces that are in league with the riots when, George, when uh, Van Jones says, bottom up, And top down, the top will clamp down. Those are the people who are trying to force this president to do what he knows needs to be done. Van Jones' words. Top down, bottom up, inside out strategy. That's what's happening. Except now. Except now we've thrown a tire iron into their little game that they have played four other times. And they are now executing the fifth time. But now we're changing the game. 
That's why we have tried to arm you with the most powerful weapon you have, information you need. Find all, find all of this out. Find it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Know it and tell everyone you know. George Soros, you should know one thing, sir. We are not Czech citizens. We are Americans. I want to take a minute here to uh, show you something that was released by George Soros last night and the uh, OSI, his uh, charitable uh, arm, you know, because he's a philanthropist. And to be fair to him, I want to show what they rolled out. But I want you to know one thing. This guy has collapsed uh, four countries, four regimes, four currencies. He's the most powerful man on earth, 35th richest man in the world. This is Enron. What you're seeing here, this is what happens when a company is in collapse. This is a desperate cry for George Soros to turn around and look at a guy at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. This is coming undone. You spread all of the information that we have given you, and you do your own homework. You verify yourself. Go to original sources and verify yourself and spread it. Because light is the only thing this guy, he can't stand the light. He has to hide behind a mask. But watch their corporate film on, oh, don't listen to that guy at 5 o'clock, really, I'm a good guy. Here it is. Over the past three decades, George Soros, the founder and chairman of the Open Society Foundations, has spent more than $8 billion to transform the lives of the world's most oppressed and ignored people. From helping those with HIV and TB in Africa, to righting centuries of wrongs against Europe's largest ethnic minority, the Roma, Soros has championed open society issues around the globe. What is it that I really care about? Democracy, uh, market, these are the institutions that you need for people to be able to improve their conditions in life. His experiences as a child in World War II fueled his drive to combat totalitarianism. In the 1980s, his Open Society Foundations helped topple communism in Eastern Europe, strengthening democracy by supporting education, justice, and freedom of information. Open society can prevail only when people can speak truth to power. <laughs> Today, the Open Society Foundations are present in more than 70 countries, including the United States. Soros recently gave $50 million to provide food, shelter, and clothing for New York City's neediest, who were hard hit by the economic crisis. The foundations work to build vibrant and tolerant democracies whose governments are accountable to their citizens. To learn more about George Soros and his philanthropy, visit OpenSocietyFoundations.org. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. And don't forget, uh, he's given all that money, um, you know, just to help good things. Well, for instance, well, just... just just a lot of these. This is only half the list of the organizations that are helping him accomplish his new world spooky world order. Yeah. That's it. There are really two ways to look at what I do um, every day here. You can either say, as my critics say, that I'm a fear monger, or you can say that I am empowering you with information. I... Um, I hate the fact that some people believe that I'm a fear monger. I just say what I believe. That's what I do. And I believe bad things are coming. I believe that we can get past them, but we have to be prepared. I've told you over and over again, I hope I'm wrong. But FDR was wrong when he said the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. The only thing we have to fear is not being prepared and not knowing what's really happening. But progressives, progressives they'll say I'm a fear monger. But the, and they want you to believe that everything is fine, and that's what they'll tell you. Watch. This is a rich country. We, we have plenty of money, money. and if you don't believe me, ask Albert. We've been able to uh, create or save three and a half million jobs. Will the Federal, Federal Reserve, Reserve monetize this debt? The Federal Reserve will not monetize the debt. That legislation, according to The Economist, has saved or created 3.6 million jobs. We have turned this economy around. I think we see entities that are fundamentally sound financially and uh, withstand some of the disaster scenarios. Okay. You can believe that. And I hope they're right. They're not, but I hope they're right. You know better. You know the truth. You know. On jobs? Really? 
Unemployment rate unchanged, 9.6% last night. They told us it would never go over 8. Food prices are rising. You don't believe me? Go shopping. Wall Street Journal now says an inflationary tide is beginning to ripple through the supermarkets and the restaurant. They're still telling you that they're worried about deflation. Don't worry about inflation. Check the price of gas. We're not going to monetize the debt. That was under oath. Really? The Fed just said that they will print more money to buy as much Treasury debt in the next eight months as the government will issue. Fannie and Freddie, Barney Frank, together they now have twice as many foreclosed homes as they did this time last year. America, we have a historic choice in front of us. Do we open our eyes or do we keep um, burying our heads in the sand? Do we end the book called America, or do we just turn the page and begin a new chapter? I've told you, 40 Day and 40 Night Challenge, please take this. People, we can't be the people who are angry. We can't be those people. They got that covered. We have to be people who say, thank goodness you're here. We have to be the ones who count on faith, hope, and charity from each other. From each other. We don't need a billionaire to activate it. We activate it in ourselves. Please share all this information with your friends. A little more on the Puppet Master on uh, tomorrow's show. And then on Friday, we're going to change the mood a bit. We're going to talk about gratitude with an incredible audience. You do not want to miss Friday. From New York, good night, America.